Real-time kinematic satellite navigation is a technique used to enhance the precision of position data derived from satellite-based positioning systems, being usable in conjunction with GPS, GLONASS and or Galileo. It uses measurements of the phase of the signal a Euro squared S carrier wave, rather than the information content of the signal, and relies on a single reference station to provide real-time corrections, providing up to centimeter level accuracy. With reference to GPS in particular, the system is commonly referred to as Carrier Phase Enhancement, or CPGPS. It has application in land survey and in hydrographic survey. Overview Background Normally, satellite navigation receivers must align signals sent from the satellite to an internally generated version of a pseudorandom binary sequence, also contained in the signal. Since the satellite signal takes time to reach the receiver, the two sequences do not initially coincide. The satellite's copy is delayed in relation to the local copy. By increasingly delaying the local copy, the two copies can eventually be aligned. The correct delay represents the time needed for the signal to reach the receiver, and from this the distance from the satellite can be calculated. The accuracy of the resulting range measurement is essentially a function of the ability of the receiver's electronics to accurately process signals from the satellite. In general receivers are able to align the signals to about 1% of 1 bit width. For instance, the course acquisition code sent on the GPS system sends a bit every 0.98 microsecond, so a receiver is accurate to 0.01 microsecond, or about 3 meters. The military only P, Y, signal sent by the same satellites is clocked 10 times faster, so with similar techniques the receiver will be accurate to about 30 centimeters. Other effects introduce errors much greater than this, and accuracy based on an uncorrected CA signal is generally about 15 m. Carrier phase tracking. RTK follows the same general concept, but uses the satellite signal's carrier wave as its signal ignoring the information contained within. The improvement possible using this signal is potentially very high if one continues to assume a 1% accuracy in locking. For instance, in the case of GPS, the course acquisition code changes phase at 1.023 MHz, but the L1 carrier itself is 1575.42 MHz, over a thousand times more often. The carrier frequency corresponds to a wavelength of 19 cm for the L1 signal. An A plus or minus 1% error in L1 carrier phase measurement thus corresponds to AA plus or minus 1.9 mm error in baseline estimation. The difficulty in making an OTK system is properly aligning the signals. The navigation signals are deliberately encoded in order to allow them to be aligned easily, whereas every cycle of the carrier is similar to every other. This makes it extremely difficult to know if you have properly aligned the signals or if they are off by one, and are thus introducing an error of 20 cm, or a larger multiple of 20 cm. This integer ambiguity problem can be addressed to some degree with sophisticated statistical methods that compare the measurements from the CA signals and by comparing the resulting ranges between multiple satellites. However, none of these methods can reduce this error to zero. Practical considerations, in practice, RTK systems use a single base station receiver and a number of mobile units. The base station rebroadcasts the phase of the carrier that it observes, and the mobile units compare their own phase measurements with the one received from the base station. There are several ways to transmit a correction signal from base station to mobile station. The most popular way to achieve real time. Low-cost signal transmission is to use a radio modem, typically in the UHF band. In most countries, certain frequencies are allocated specifically for RTK purposes. Most land survey equipment has a built-in UHF brand radio modem as a standard option. This allows the units to calculate their relative position to within millimeters, although their absolute position is accurate only to the same accuracy as the computed position of the base station. The typical nominal accuracy for these systems is 1 cm a plus or minus 2 parts per million horizontally and 2 cm a plus or minus 2 ppm vertically. Although these parameters limit the usefulness of the RTK technique for general navigation, 
the technique is perfectly suited to roles like surveying. In this case, the base station is located at a known surveyed location, often a benchmark, and the mobile units can then produce a highly accurate map by taking fixes relative to that point. RTK is also found uses in autodrive autopilot systems, precision farming, machine control systems and similar roles. The virtual reference station method extends the use of RTK to a whole area of a reference station network. Operational reliability and accuracy depend on the density and capabilities of the reference station network. A continuously operating reference station network is a network of RTK base stations that broadcast corrections, usually over an Internet connection. Accuracy is increased in a CORS network, because more than one station helps ensure correct positioning and guards against a false initialization of a single base station. See also, Differential GPS, Galileo Positioning System, Global Positioning System, European Geostationary Navigation Overlay Service, GLONASS, References. External links, SmartNet OS A network of continuously operating reference stations for receiving RTK corrections, a comprehensive online tutorial for network real-time kinematic by Techman Geomatics, Magellan RTK page, Trimble at GPS, section explaining RTK. Product survey on RTKD GPS receivers for hydrographic use, SATL.com Radio Technology for RTK, GPSPP.sakura.ne.jprtklib, an open source program package for GNSS positioning, North GPS high-end RTK components for custom applications.